What is going on guys? <laughs> Welcome to another Palette Project video. In this side series to my usual gardening videos, I'm going to be showing you how to make things from pallets or reclaimed wood for almost no money at all. Nine times out of ten, the projects come out completely free and you can make everything from you know a bench to a bird box, you name it, you can make it with pallets. Enjoy the video guys and I will catch up with you at the end. Thank you. So the first thing you're going to need is a pallet. This is a double pallet. It's twice the length of a standard pallet. If you can't find a pallet of this size, just use a normal pallet and join two slats of wood together to give you a longer piece of wood. So we'll start by dismantling it. <laughs> the pallet I'm using has five slats, so we are going to be restricted to using just five slats, but I think that will work. The next thing to do is take out and remove all the nails and then join all of these slats together as one post. And you can, of course, reuse the nails, just give them a little tap along the edge with the hammer just to straighten them out and then recycle them. So once you've got all your slats dismantled, denailed, and you can tell that they're all the same size, it's time to screw them all together and create one solid post. To screw these all down, I'm just using a deck screw that won't actually go all the way through them all. So I'll just take one slat off, screw through four of them, and then I'll add that slat back on and just screw through the one. And this is the prime time before you put the screws in to use glue if you choose to use it. And this is it. This is our post that we've created from layering all the slats together and just screwing them all down. Now there were four pieces left on the base of the pallet, the, the thicker, stronger wood this stuff. <laughs> now what we're going to do is we're going to create a cut a quarter of the way up one piece of this, uh, this wood. Now one of my subscribers sent me a video of how to do it precisely with just a normal handsaw. Hello Mr Mills, just going to give you a quick demo on the saw that somebody just told you that about the angles on the saw. They didn't, show, they didn't tell you how to do it though, so I'm going to just put you a message here to show you. This is your saw, it's got a 90 degree angle here and a 45 degree angle here. How you do it is you pluck that up against a piece of wood like that. Doing this one handed on my iPad. So just pluck that up there like that. There's your 90 degree, inscribe that. There's your 90 degree. But, for the 45 degree, if you tilt the, tilt the saw, and then under, underneath the saw now, it's now butted up against the under half of this, which is on the other side of the metal blade. So that's, that is butted up against a piece of wood. So there's your 45 degree angle. Describe that, there's your 45 degree angle. It's this edge on the thing, on the, on the saw. You need to butt that up against a piece of wood under, on top. There you go, 90 degree, like that. Turn it, and it makes a 45 degree angle along the piece of wood you can move it along there you go now you only know what you know guys i am self-educated so this actually got away from me but it does say on it that this is a 45 degree uh, angle and this is a 90 degree angle so yeah for anyone else that didn't know that thank you to the subscribers that pointed it out and obviously to the one that made the video but uh, check your saw and if it's got a handle like that 
then you'll be able to do this cut quite precisely. Just use a spoon to mark it off. Just use what you've got, guys. <laughs> and this line here is where we're going to be cutting, and we will be using both pieces, so no pallet wood will be going to waste. Once you've got it cut, you can just take your smaller piece of wood, line it up on one of the additional remaining pieces of wood that still needs cutting, mark your line and follow that all the way through until you've done all the pieces. So then you'll end up with four long pieces with a 45 degree cut on the end and four short pieces with the same 45 degree cut on the end. Just make sure that your cuts are both pointing towards the same direction. Now the reason we do this is because once this half is fitted to your post, it will mean that the bottom half won't be sitting on the floor like that. Instead, it'll be sitting nice and flush. So guys, I thought I'd do this in stages just to make it easy. These are indeed gonna be the final cuts before we actually put this thing together. So then we come back to our post of wood and then what we wanna do is grab one of our longer lengths that we cut with the 45 degree angle and we basically just wanna butt that up against it and uh, obviously, if you've got level ground, use that. I'm currently on wood chip, probably not ideal. But, um, but yeah, you basically just want to line it up, but down on the ground. We want to make sure that the post is level. So for that, what we do is we grab ourselves a spirit level, and we place it against a piece of wood. And then what we do is we just adjust the wood back and forth, you know, forward and backwards, until we find our level. So we'll drive a pilot hole through here, followed by a screw, and then we'll repeat that all the way round. And that way we'll know that this post will be straight when it's situated in your garden. So we'll continue that all the way round, and then we'll come back and we'll strengthen it. I've got three pieces currently attached and now we're ready, while it's still flat, to attach our first support. So that's just gonna be one of the smaller pieces of wood that we cut. Now obviously we've only put one screw in here, so as you can see, it's not very strong at the moment. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna join this by lining it up and basically screwing in it on like that. We could of course have moved this leg up and positioned it away that it was sort of, you know, like this, but I don't feel that's gonna give it as much strength as if we you know, do something like this. So this is what we're going with for this design, guys. And what it's gonna mean is that this support is actually gonna hold the main leg. So yeah, we'll screw this down in the same way. Pilot hole, straight through the wood, and then we'll pop two screws in the side of here into the main leg. Another thing I thought to do to strengthen it was to just come in the side of it, just like that, so that we're angled to go through at least two pieces of wood and then we're just gonna come in with a, a three inch nail and we're gonna hammer that directly through some of the slats in the post. And that would just mean it would be a lot stronger. I'm now just gonna go round the whole base and basically just reinforce it with some more nails. So I've pre-drilled some pilot holes just at slight angles we can come in now with our nails just to give it more strength. Now guys, this is not gonna look like something you bought from a shop for two reasons. One is because it's made out of old pallet wood. And two, I'm trying not to do intricate cuts and designs because this series is about showing the average person how to reuse a pallet in a very productive way. So I'm trying to show you in this series the easiest way to make something. By all means, if you wanna adapt your design, and make it, I don't know, slightly better, go for it. But this is the result so far. <laughs> Boy, it's up. <laughs> Guys, all that's left to do is put some hanging basket brackets on here um, and hang some baskets up. But guys, that is it. 100% pallet wood. And yeah, I'm quite happy with that, to be honest. <laughs> I'm going to take it to some flat ground over on the other plot just to make sure it's all square. Oh. 
looks good guys. Come on, I'll take you over. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, hmm, is it actually gonna be strong enough to support the weight of all of those baskets? You know, once you water a hanging basket, it does get quite heavy. Well, let's find out, shall we? <laughs> yes, I weigh over 13 stone. I'm never gonna add more than, you know, a couple of baskets to this anyway. Guys, as you can see, it's strong enough. <laughs> Now what I love about this kind of project the most is that it leaves the least amount of scrap wood at the end of it. That is all we have from that enormous double pallet. That is it, isn't it? Yeah, that is literally everything that's left. So don't throw these away, guys. They can be used for another project. You could even use them as shelving brackets to support a shelf inside your shed. So let's continue screwing on our brackets. Uh, and then we'll go and get our baskets and we'll hang them all up and we'll see how it looks. There you go guys, that is our very rustic, yet somehow modern, hanging basket tree. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Cheers guys, take care, subscribe. <laughs>